Hello and welcome to Singing Tips. I'm Lois Johnston and I'm a professional singer, professional opera singer, I should say, probably, and vocal coach. And I've been singing and teaching singing for about 30 years. And if you've come to this channel, you can expect um, a step by step tutorial of whatever song happens to be on the menu. And today that is going to be Ave Maria and it's the Bach Guno version. So this one um, began life as a piano prelude written by J.S. Bach, keyboard prelude. Um, and that was around 1722. And then um, a composer called Charles Guno, who is a well-known operatic composer actually, um, wrote a melody which worked in conjunction with Bach, so it layered over the top of Bach's um, keyboard prelude. Um, and Ave Maria, by this co collaboration, um, even though they weren't alive at the same time, um, between Bach and Guno. Um, so actually Guno initially wrote the melody um, for a cellist, a student of his who was a cellist. So it started life as um, a piano, um, keyboard solo with an additional cello solo part um, and then it was discovered that that fitted um, beautifully with the Ave Maria text so it became um, a sung solo um, and that's how Ave Maria as we know it came into being. So as always I'm going to start with pronunciation and breathing. So this um, Ave Maria is in Latin um, and I always teach the open Italianate vowels for my Latin pronu pronunciation basically because they're so beautiful to sing. So Ave Maria. So oh, I should have said A, E, I, O, U are our vowel sounds. So the letter A is always going to be A, the letter E is always going to be E, the letter I is always going to be E, the letter O is always going to be O, and the letter U is always going to be U. So we have Ave, open, Maria, open, Grazia plena, breath, Dominus tecum, breath, Benedicta tu, breath, In mulieribus, breath, Et Benedictus breath, fructus ventris tui Jesus breath, Sancta Maria breath, Sancta Maria breath, Maria breath, ora pro nobis breath, nobis peccatoribus breath, nunc et in ora breath, in ora mortis nostre. Amen. So the H's in Latin are going to be silent. So um, when we get to nunc et in ora, um, we don't say hora, we say ora. So that was where most of the breaths are going to be. We'll talk about some of those a little bit later on as we get more into the technical nitty gritty of the song um, and your vowel sounds. So whenever you see those vowels, those printed vowels, you always keep them open, just like I described there at the very beginning. A, E, E, O, U. Next, I will give you a very quick translation. So Ave Maria, it's, it's the prayer that many of you will already know very well. Um, Hail Mary, gratia plena, full of grace, Dominus tecum, the Lord is with thee, benedicta tu in mulieribus, blessed art thou among women. Um, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus Christ. Um, Sancta Maria, pray for us. Sancta Maria, that repeats. Um, ora pro nobis, 
now and in the hour of our death. Um, and that's it. Amen. So at this point, um, I will probably just remind you that before you do any big singing like this, you really should be doing a nice 10 minute warm up. So there'll be a link to my 10 minute warm up, um, which you can um, do if you haven't already warmed your voice up. The range of this song is actually really quite wide. It's almost two entire octaves. It's a huge range. So you really do need to get that voice going. Um, grab yourself a copy of the music if you can. There are plenty of free PDFs um, of the music online and a pencil, something to write with. And we'll get cracking and um, go through much more technically now. So um, in this section, I'll demonstrate where to um, breathe. Oh, no, I know what we'll do. We'll do a sing through first. That was what I meant to do. I wanted to do a sing through first with the pronunciation and the breath. So you don't have too much to think about to start with. So the first sing through is going to be pronunciation and getting the breaths in the right place. Now, I have chosen, you can get this in a multitude of keys. I've actually chosen a mezzo key. It's a little bit too low for me and my soprano voice, but I've chosen to do it in E flat. Um, so it goes from the, the ranges, the B flat below middle C, all the way up to a uh, top G. So it's, it's still quite high. Um, but you can get it in lower keys and in higher keys. But this just seemed to be a good middle of the road key for um, more people to be able to find it accessible. So we're in 4-4. Four, four. So our pulse is one, two, breathe, four. So that was our first sing through with some of the breaths. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the breaths as we get to them, because there are um, a few different options for you. Some of the phrases are just probably a little bit too long to do in one breath. So there are um, plan B breaths that we can put in. So first phrase, nice and easy. So this is the technical section now. So you've got one, two, three, 
four beats before you come in. You've actually got four whole bars of four beats introduction, but the bar before you come in, you just need to take a breath at least at beat three so that you're prepared for that first entry. So it's one, two, Now, vowel onsets are always a little bit tricky, so just breathe the note in. And we want a nice smooth onset. We don't want, ah, that's just a little bit too aggressive to do a full glottal, um, glottal stop there. So we're going for the nice smooth onset, just straight on the breath. Now you can take your next breath without closing your mouth. You're singing an F. Keep your mouth open so that the next breath can go in. So here we go again. Two, three. Dynamically, I think we just want a nice, maybe mezzo piano there. So not too quiet that it sounds hesitant and scared, but confident, but still quiet. Because we've got a long way to go in the song. We've got a big climax um, to deal with much later. So just let's keep it all nice and mezzo piano, I think, at the moment. Then we're going to take a breath. And the next phrase is... So keep your A vowel gra as you drop that octave, keep the vowel, the A vowel the same for both the upper note and the lower note. Just do that again this time I'll carry on. Three. Grazie plena Dominus tecum And you'll see I did the same with Do So you're dropping an octave, it's a long way, but keep the vowel the same. Do Minus tecum. And rather than um, which isn't going to resonate, resonate, tecum isn't going to sound pleasant. Tecum. Nice ooh vowel there. Then you've got a whole beat to take a new breath before the next phrase. So we've got tecum. So again, with the octave drop, you're keeping the vowel the same. Now with this phrase, it's suggested in my copy and the um, dynamic markings are probably editorial, as in ed added later by an editor rather than by either Bach or Guno. But what we don't want is for the highest note to be the loudest note, because that's just a little bit unsubtle and, and not very re refined. So if we do, that's a little bit harsh. So we're going to come in a little bit quieter. So you're going to grow the whole phrase and then diminuendo through the end of the phrase so that the beginning of the phrase doesn't just feel like a sledgehammer. So you're doing one of those nice hairpins dynamically so that D, diktatu, is the most important part of the phrase. So three, four. Breath. 
So this one, um, there's a gentle crescendo through that phrase, I think. And the thing to watch here is ribus. The re of ribus is a really short note. So air is longer than you might think it is. So ribus. And again, it's a really short note that you're jumping down to. And this time you have to keep the vowel the same as you jump down because the syllable isn't changing. Off on the fourth beat. And then we're going to have to talk breathing here. Fructus ventris tu Jesus. You actually have two options. You can breathe after fructus, but that's not great. It's fruit of fruit of Mary's womb. So I think fructus ventris breath tu Jesus is a better place to do it. And when we had our first thing through, I'm not sure that I did put it there. I think I put it after fructus. Um, so I'm probably going to suggest that if you can, you don't do that and you breathe after ventris. I just think it's nicer. So let's just try that one again. Three. Fructus ventris. Breath. I think that's a much nicer thing. Now, I think as well to help you with that breath pattern, if you aren't too loud going through the fructus ventris phrase, you won't blow too much air and waste too much air. So if you if you don't do a huge crescendo too early, fru, keep it back. Tu, sven, now crescendo tree when you know how much air you've got left, then you can take a breath. And bringing it right down because we're going to start building through the Sancta Maria's now. So we've got Sancta Maria. So here you've got a breath a rest after Sancta. So you can take a breath there if you need it, but try and make sure that it's silent because you're saying Sancta Maria rather than Sancta Maria. So if I take a breath, I do a really silent one. Sancta Maria. Sancta Hopefully, you'll also be able to go up dynamically through those three chunks of phrases. So, Sancta Maria, louder. Sancta Maria, even louder. And then Maria, um, the most, most loud one. So, that's really imploring Maria at that point. So, let's just go from there and do all those Sanctas. So, it's start quite, um, quite to start with. piano quiet quiet for the next phrase keep all of that phrase quiet because we're going to do our big build in a second so just keeping that entire two bar phrase super quiet do that again Now we start our crescendos very gently. Mm. 
Now we've got another octave, this time going up. Most of them have been coming down. This pre, pre, um, an upward octave presents a slightly different challenge. So we've got nobis Pitch the T of Toribus on the upper note. And as you're doing nobis do a slight crescendo through ca. And that little crescendo on ca, pitching the tur on the note of toribus will just help you negotiate your way smoothly through that octave so that it doesn't sound like a big um, jump vocally. At which point we're probably about two thirds of the way um, through our crescendo, our um, crescendo palette. Next phrase, loud. And that's the loudest point. The aura is the loudest point in the whole song. And you have two breathing options here and you can do either one or both of them actually. You can take a breath after nunk. Nunk breath. Breath because there's a comma. I will take a breath there. So all together you have three breaths in that phrase that you can take and I personally, because it's loud and it's dramatic at this point, I would take all of them, I'd use all of them. So I'll just go through them again and call them out for you. Nunk breath. Breath. whole song it's actually quite a challenging one because of the range um, and because of the dynamic contrast in there um, it's it's got a really um, broad dynamic palette um, so we've done all of the technical stuff that I wanted to do um, at this point I think what we'll do now is have our full sing through where we try and um, employ all of the singing tips as well as getting the breaths in the right places and get our text correct. It's a tall order. Um, so at this point, please do, um, if you found the video useful, do like and subscribe. Um, please feel free to share with any singing friends or with your choir or your choir director. Um, I do all of this free of charge because I've been very blessed in my career and I've had some really amazing help along the way and this is my way of giving back. I love nothing more than helping people with their singing. Um, so I hope you're enjoying this song as much as I am. I love singing this. It's a great um, church solo if you get the opportunity. Um, and now we are going to do our final sing through. So just trying to remember all of the things. So I'll try and gesture and call out when I can. So one, two, three.
Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.